Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us here in Dublin. Before we get on with things, I'm just going to point out as well for our cameraman for our back row here, there is a stage edge, so don't fall off of this. <laughs> we don't want any accidents. Um, thank you for joining us today in Dublin. Elite Sports Promotions and Shooter Sports have scheduled this press conference to introduce their exciting new boxing partnership and to announce the first show of the year. Saturday, April 1st, at the National Stadium, the home of Irish boxing sees the return. Headlined by Jason Quigley. Jason will box for the first time professionally in Ireland and will make his return to the ring since fighting for the WBO middleweight title in November 2021. Today we can announce that Jason's opponent will be Kim Paulson of Denmark. We welcome you here. Paulson has a record of 36 professional contests, 30 victories and 8 coming by way of stoppage. We are delighted to have Kim here with us today, ahead of the event scheduled as a super middleweight contest. I'm now going to pass you over to our promoter and matchmaker, founder of Elite Sports Promotions, Barry Walsh, to share further details of the partnership, the undercard, and then to introduce Jason himself. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Derek. Well, firstly, uh, thank you very much for everyone attending today. I know everybody has a, a match schedule and it's really appreciated. Um, firstly, before we go on to the, the show, uh, I want to talk about the partnership that we've just signed with Shear Sports. So Elite is uh, a family business from myself and my son Anthony. Anthony is a young journalist who is the brains and everything behind all the design and everything for the media. So we really appreciate the work that Anthony has done to, to make this happen. So Jason and I started working together on our last show. Jason's on the commentary and Brett McGinty uh, was on the show, so we were working very closely. And then we, did, we, we realized that we both had the same mindset to bring a good platform for young Irish boxers. There's a massive pool of talent here that we're not, just not getting the opportunities with the right shows here. And we hope that with this partnership that we can make that change. The lads, uh, unfortunately, couldn't be here. Ken Shear and Lyle Green, they will be here for the show. They're absolutely, you can see why Jason has been with them throughout his whole professional career. They're the most decent lads I've ever had to the pleasure of doing any of the business with. They've been fantastic. And their passion behind what we're trying to do here today is second to none. So we're delighted today. Um, our first signing as partners, we had my own son, Harry Walsh. Tyler Jolly and Dara Kilo. So I'll talk a little bit about them. So bronze medalist, Conference Commonwealth medalist, Golf Commonwealth Youth, and British champion Tyler Jolly. We'd like to give him a round of applause for being here today. My own lad Paddy had an intensive uh, 60 fights as an amateur and went off on some other sports. I suppose with Liam being involved with and then spending all the time with Tony and Dave in the gym, he got the bug back and uh, Paddy will make his debut on the show on the 1st of April. <laughs> and our third signing today is a young lad who we actually met, Dara, down in Kerry. We were running the gym down in Kerry when we were living in Kerry and Dara was training with us down there and went back to Australia, started his professional career in Australia, has had three and all, and we're delighted that he's come here now, ready for a camp and to, to join us today. So Derek here. So to my right here is Kim Paulson. Kim arrived very late last night. This is Jason's opponent for the uh, for the the show on the 1st of April. As Perry said, Kim has had 30 professional wins and 8 coming by knockout. It's a tough opponent. We went through 2 or 3, uh, even 4 different guys that we were looking at and all of them, Jason, Jason who was pushing, uh, dealing with Andy, looking at different options, who would be the right opponent. But Jason was adamant he wanted someone with a strong record. And the ironic thing is, this man here, Kim, 
has actually boxed here in Ireland. He's been in the national stadium representing his country of Denmark as an amateur. So this is his second visit to the stadium. So we really thank him. He came over with his wife. They travelled over late last night. And it's a pleasure to have him here today. A big round of applause for him. So then we have to talk about the priority of the show is the return of my friend, my partner, and a world, what a, an honour it is to have a world-class boxer coming in and headlining the show here at the stadium. So a big hand of applause for Jason Griffith. Jason has been an absolute pleasure and you wouldn't meet a more decent, honest lad who everything has all been about the lads getting on this show and promoting proper uh, shows that we, we, we have big ambitions, we have a big program ahead of ourselves, we're already looking for larger venues, we want to keep the regular venues going here to push out as many shows now as we can. We're not here, this isn't just a one trick pony, we're here to roll this out on a, on a, on a major scale. And with having Ken and Lyle in the background, it's just, it's just opening the doors that we need to make this happen. We're in the process of uh, finalising a TV agreement and um, everything going well. We'll have live television, everything will be in place ready for the show. That's, that's our next step. So we're really excited about that. So the main thing is, I want to talk firstly about the, uh, the undercard. And there's two things that are really special about the undercard. We're actually going to make, we think we're actually going to make history on the show. We have two sets of brothers that are going to be boxing on the show. It's a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to have Paddy Donovan and his brother Edward both boxing on the card and my own two sons, Liam Walsh and Paddy Walsh. Stand up lads and take them an applause. So it's an absolute honour for myself and Martin to have our own sons here boxing on the same show. I think it's going to be uh, an absolute storm. So we'll go through their appointment shortly, but I'm just going to now, I want to go on to about first a couple of reasons. One, I think it could be the show Stealer. It's an absolute um, blinding fight that we have today. Tony McGlynn and James McGibbon will box for the BUI Celtic belt over an eight round on the show and it's an honour for uh, Michael Conlon has kindly, uh, the Vice President of the BUI has brought over the belt for the lads so I'd like to call the two lads up to hold the belt or get some pictures of them I know that Tony has a, he has a family engagement that he has to get away with but I'd like the lads to say a few words before we get the, onto the pictures and talk about this fight has been going on for the last two years. It's been on, it's been off, it's been on, it's been off. If ever two lads needed to get in the ring together, it's these two lads. They've had an unbelievable amateur career. They're, um, Tony is boxing in, um, in Glasgow on the 24th, so that he qualifies with his sixth rounder. Everything's going well, and Butch assures me that that shouldn't be a problem. He's fit, he's ready for the fight, and with James, these two lads, this is going to be an absolute storm of a fight. So I'd like to ask the lads just to say a few words about the fight coming up, and then we'll get some pictures. So I'm going to put you over to James first. Yeah, um, big fight, and it's been going on a year, not so much two years, but uh, it was meant to happen back in Belfast in August 10, Belfast. But, yeah, we're here now. Kelly Peggy, I've been barking all about Kelly Peggy for a few like, four years now, since I turned over the road. Trying to get me to go out of a very familiar setting for me. I've been boxing the stadium half of the time as an amateur and one of the times as an amateur in here. So, yeah, right around the road, I'll have a nice couple of weeks of training coming out. Thank you very much. And Tony, would like to have you make a few words before we get up to do some pictures. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah, see for that. It happened a lot before. It's carrying me home town now, so I wouldn't put it. Can't wait. Just get this one out of 
Men er under en DNA i Vestrum, der er ikke lavet op, og kommer ind. Program til sig. So now, uh, I'd like to hand you over to the main man himself, making the return, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Wigan. Well, uh, thanks everybody for showing up here, um, media and all, great to have you, great to be covering this card. Very excited to be back here in a familiar setting. Many of the great memories was had in here, many of the great achievements was had in here, and uh, I'm not going to go through that again on April 1st. Another great night, another great achievement, another great memory cemented here in the National Stadium. And uh, yeah, I'm very confident moving into this fight now. It's been a while out of the ring, so great to get back in there now. Training camp from home brilliant so far. We're in great shape, we're, everything's looking good, and uh, it's getting very exciting now being here today, getting everything properly launched off, and uh, yeah, very excited for this one coming up, and going to be a good thing to first, as we see there as well. A lot of talent on the undercard also, and um, going to make it even more interesting on the night to have these fighters, like everybody on the stage that's on this undercard, has achieved at such a high level. Some of them already in the professional team and every single one of them in the amateur game. So high quality card. It's a privilege to be a part of it as well, to have all these lads here too. And um, you know, we're just really excited, looking forward to April 1st, putting on a clinical performance, putting on a very good show and uh, moving on into, into the next stage of the career. So I guess we'll hand it over to the press man who wants to do you want to hand that to then the one who wants to ask any questions. Okay. Jason's just wondering as well about uh, I guess walking into a state of youth box that many times singer based on a poster. The opportunity to play on for what feels like the first time in an awfully long time. And I guess as journalists, as we've covered your career, we've asked you many times whether you've been living in California or Sheffield, when you finally have the opportunity to come home. So not only to play here, but to be potentially kickstarting something as well, where you've got an unbelievable support that's what we need you. Maybe um, in a sport where we've had a lot of false dawns in the Republic of Ireland, this could actually be the start of something substantial. Yeah, I think, you know, with, there's an underlying, there's, there's, a, there's an underlying purpose, um, I think, going on here as well. You know, um, obviously, boxing has served a massive part of my life and will continue to serve a massive part of my life. But I want to leave this sport not just from the achievements or the fights that I've won or anything like that. I want to leave this sport um, 
in a much better place than I could come into it. And I think professional boxing is needing that right now in Ireland. It's an absolute pleasure to be given this opportunity and be able to take this opportunity here to Dublin, to the Republic of Ireland, put on a show and get professional boxing back on its feet here in the Republic of Ireland. Folks, the floor is open. Anyone else with questions? Just you imagine that we're to be back here. It's probably a lot of great memories of without the fight movement. All your memories of and boxing here. The last time you were here maybe a decade ago. You're gonna be fit as a button. Um yeah, look, I think you know, I've I've had many of great memories in here. Um but I think anybody that steps in the ring as an amateur and you know national champion just I, I think becoming senior champion and I still continue to call the senior champion. Um, that's what uh, we've all known it as. But becoming the national senior champion in here was uh, was probably one of my most special nights. Um, I can remember that the queue, ironically enough, for like you could say, but that there place there was just rammed full of ones from Donegal and family and friends. And uh, yeah, that's probably my, my, my best memory looking back in here. And it's weird, like whenever you're on the national team, you just used to stroll about in here days as well, like with the stuff going on. But it's uh, it definitely is an iconic venue. Um, it holds a lot of memories, and as it says, on the about everybody on the there, like nearly everyone has probably fought here. You know, so it's very familiar setting. It's a uh, brilliant setting. So looking forward now to, to getting in here as a professional. As I said earlier, you know, making another great memory in here. What about for yourself, Paddy? It's a little bit fresher in the memory, and maybe your, your last four here didn't quite go the way you would have wanted it at the time, but to get back here and have a, a bit of a platform, actually, to show people what you're about, and a little bit closer to home as well, where you, you can have a, maybe a few more family and friends travelling up from the back area. Yeah, it's an exceptional place for me. It was a place that I established my name, won 30 national titles here, so... Um, Good. Obviously, the last time out there, I boxed Carmelite. It didn't go exactly the way I wanted it to go, but um, it was a fight that I thought I won. And from then on, I, I thought I'd never fight here again. I signed a contract with top rank. But here we are, we're back here in the stadium, ready to run another great show. And hopefully, bring a big support from Limerick and from Ireland. And then, yeah, to start some complete here again in Dublin. Could you see yourself maybe at some point taking the mantle from Jason? Say, if he decides in, in a few years' time to, to step away, maybe it's your face on the poster, you start that, or you continue the movement, if you like, the momentum behind boxing in this country. Yeah, Jason has been a great role model, not just for me, for probably every fighter at the table at the moment. Um, as a fighter I've looked up to, and as a fighter I always study, along with Andy Lee here beside me. Yeah, so it's our plan, it's our plan to, uh, to move fast, to move up the ladder and I've become an established name in Irish boxing and um, as I said, move on to big teams and become a world champion and give other kids the opportunities that I've got coming through. Uh, Jason, um, <coughs> obviously this is your first fight back home. Uh, your last fight was a world title shot and uh, you have a goal to help rise the, the goals for everybody but what about your own selfish uh, hopes and dreams? Obviously probably to fight for the world title again Ideally at home or maybe go back to the States for it because we've got the home platform now. Is that the ultimate dream to bring a world title fight to Dublin or somewhere in Ireland? Yeah, of course, you know, that would be that'd be something that would be very intriguing, you know, to, to bring a world title fight back here to to Ireland. Um, but I'm not like you know, there was a lot of things said after the last fight. There was a lot of um, people were wondering was I gonna come back? into the ring again and I had to take my time I had to make sure that I was making the right decisions and I did make the right decisions you know I took patience and the time that I needed and I'm not just coming back here for the sake of it I'm not just coming back here to take the national stadium off the list of boxing in Ireland as a professional I'm coming back here not to fight for a world title again but I'm coming back to want a world title again and you know this is the this is the start of it now this is the journey that that I have took my first steps on once again.
is that something you've discussed as part of a new partnership which will hopefully grow in its own strength to ideally do it here? Ideally, it would be brilliant to have a world title fight here in Ireland. Um, but I think everybody that's present here today knows that there's nothing guaranteed in boxing and there's so many moving parts that God knows what's going to happen down the line. Like, if we can make it happen that a world title fight comes back here to Ireland, then 100% we're going to do what it takes to do that. But um, we'll just see how the, how the path turns out. We're in the right direction. There's going to be a lot of moving parts, but we'll just take them as they come and uh, we'll make the best of them. At what point did you know for sure you were making the right decision to come back? Was there a moment where it ticked in your mind and you thought, I'm not finished yet? There was, um, whenever I got the surgery on the jaw, um, so they put plates in and then they had to take, do the surgery and take the plates out. And they says to me, if you want to box again, we need to take the plates out. So there wasn't a question of it out. Like, it was as early as back then, but at the same time I, I wasn't you know, making any rash decisions in. Um, but, you know, there wasn't even a question whether to keep them in, like, you know, it was to get them out and as, as the time progressed then, and, you know, the, the wounds healed a little bit, um, you can still see those wounds, you know what I mean, but they're, they're a great reminder now of, of what I've been through and, and where to go next in my career, and, uh, yeah, it was never a question. Really. Do you feel as though you are coming back with a point to prove to wider boxing, given how that world title fight went, like you were unfortunate in the sense that your jaw went so early in the fight, it, it felt as though you couldn't give a, a fair representation of yourself that night. And in fairness, when you lose a fight like that and you haven't fought in so long, there's a tendency for the sport to just forget about you, right? So is part of this about actually just reminding people what you were about as well? Yeah, look, you know, I can turn around and say, don't give a shit, but people say this. <laughs> but sometimes you do, like, you know, and sometimes it does hit home with you a little bit and it's an entertainment business. My first goal and my, my first aim is to do what me and my team believe that I can do and go out and achieve. That's first and foremost. And once I take care of that, then I'm going to right everybody wrong that, that says that I couldn't do it, that says that I couldn't make it. That's just going to be part of the journey. But that's something that, of course, you want to, you want to acknowledge as well. Like, you know, first and foremost, when people say that, of course, it gets into your head a little bit, you might think about it, but, you know, you wipe it out, you get the, the blinkers back on, you get taken care of your own job at hand, and that's what I've done over the last couple of months, and uh, just taking care of that will take care of everything else in the background. Andy, you've obviously tread a similar path in your own career, <coughs> where you had the, the defeat to Brian Leary, you came back, you built towards a world title shot, that didn't go to plan, and then you finished it with a, a final chapter and a flourish. So you were in a pretty good position to, to steer Jason through this portion of his career as well. And have you guys sort of discussed that, or have you mapped that out in your own mind? Yeah, um, there's, you know, there's, there's still the ambition to become more champion. And so, well, sometimes you have to try once to realize what it takes. You know, like it's like the Olympics, like, might be cool. Um, and I felt the same when I fought Chavez two years out of my car. Um, so Jason will know what it's like to go, go, go to that place. But, um, yeah. The fact that he's here shows that he's hungry. He has a desire. And, he has to and this, this whole show is it's a great opportunity because I can't speak for Mark, I can't speak for him, but between Jason and Paddy and Edward, um, three of the best fighters in this country, boxing in this country, probably you know, two of the best young fighters in the world, and Jason, who um, is world class. So it's an opportunity to come here to Dublin for Irish fight fans to come here. Uh, in the building where it's supposed to be boxing, you know, to watch some professional boxing, watch some of the best fighters this country's produced to fight. And, uh, because who knows where the, like, there is a big plan, but Jason's on your phone call away from fighting the info group. Who knows? Of wins, he could be back in Las Vegas on New York or wherever it is. Paddy's got, we've obviously got huge ambitions for Paddy. Uh, and this would be a nice box take for Paddy in terms of, you know, 
high in the home. People get a chance to see him. As I said, it's an opportunity. If you can say you saw Paddy Dunham when he's world champion, you said, yeah, I remember watching him in the stadium. You know, when he played, you know, he was 25 years ago, when he watched him fight. Um, because that's, that's what's in his future. It's only, it's only a matter of time. So if he's next fight for the Indian or America. So it's a good chance for him to get, him, get up here and watch all these young guys fight. You know, James Gibbon and, and, and Tony there, they're going to put on a great show as well. And, Back. What was it like putting the car together, Jason? Is that was is it fun or a distraction or? It's a headache. <laughs> 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 Listen to that, man. <laughs> no, look. Um, obviously, first and foremost, I'm a fighter as well. Mm. So um, it's great that we have this relationship and we have this team that's that is surrounding us. Um, that I can put the head down. I can focus on. Fight and get ready to put on a show on April first, and, and Barry, Barry takes care of that there. And the lads in America always a phone call away, so you know we have we've everything taken care of, and it hasn't been a headache at all. And you know, as you see the lads up here, they're all quality, good lads that are all in it for the right reason, and uh, there's been no headaches so far, am I? <laughs> Could you imagine it taking ten years? To Kind of nine years into your professional career before you get here to fight in Ireland? Um, I suppose I've never really. You always do want to come back and fight here, um, but it was never really like on the path for me. Obviously, when I signed over in America and I was over there, like it was always Las Vegas, LA, New York, or Boston. Those were the kind of main areas that you were always kind of edging towards but you know probably over the last the last couple of years of my career I've always been edging towards getting the fight back at home and uh, didn't think it would take this long maybe yeah to answer your question but I'm happy that it's here now I'm excited that it's here now at this time. I know it would be close in terms of the timeline but we'll talk about the, the KDK card on May 20th could you see yourself fighting on that? Look, as we say, boxing's a funny old game. There's always moving parts, and uh, we'll take care of this one first now, and April first. We plan to put on a good performance, and we'll move on in and see what the, the next opportunity brings in. Where did you like? Should that fight take place in Crow Park with Kitty Taylor? I give McGregor a shout there. <laughs> yeah. um, no, look, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to know. Um, I think the the people were were built up and so excited about this Crow Park. That it does seem like a drop down out of the three arena, but if they had it turned out and says at the very start that it was going to be in the three arena, I think everyone would have been over the moon with just Katie coming back. I think it was all the talks of Crow Park, which I think was a very good move as well because it has definitely put the pressure on now to make that happen. And you know, there's, there's no better woman in, in sport, not alone Ireland, to, to headline Crow Park. And you know, I definitely think it should happen for Katie herself for everything that she's done for this country, not just in sport, but um, for the, f the fans of Ireland as well. It'll be such a be such an unbelievable event. Kim, Kim, we, we've been speaking to Jason about... Um, oh, wait, is it okay? <coughs> it's good, yeah. 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 Uh, we've been speaking to Jason a lot about what happens after this fight and building a a movement in Ireland where he can return to this stadium many times, but you obviously are coming over here with other plans, plans to stop that from happening. What are your thoughts on fighting Jason in April? First of all, I know Jason very well from, from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and yes, he's a very good fighter. And I know it will be very difficult uh, to fight here, but I trust myself, and yes, it's a big opportunity for me. And when I heard about it from, from Barry, I was I was like, yes, I want to fight here, and I have uh, fight in Australia, US, and everywhere, Germany, England, everywhere. And I think um, it will be a good fight. I prepare very well. And um, my last fight didn't go that well. I get stopped in the fourth round. Um, I was com completely empty 
uh, it was done to make so much weight the last three, three days, and I think 11 kilos is pretty much. And yes, I had two weeks of preparation of, um, for the fight, and yeah, it didn't go, go that way. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm not that fighter like I was in the last fight, and yes, I, I hope it will be another good fight. And Jason, I have uh, a lot of respect for him, he's a good fighter and uh, has a lot of experience and like me too, I have a little bit more fights than him but I think he has uh, bigger fights than me so, but I look forward to it and I'm happy to be here I have good memories from here, I was here one time with the national team and I got a win, one point but maybe it goes like, like that uh, one more time, maybe, maybe not, we will see all good? Yeah. Okay guys, I think uh, we'll do some pictures now. Uh, we're we're going to get the, uh, the brothers up. We're going to have uh, Scott's performance. We're going to have Paddy, Edward, Paddy and him. Come on up and we'll uh, get some pictures done. Thank you. 